Hey, Carlos, home from work. Hey. What, what are you doing? Um, You're painting turkey carcasses? Really? Well, no, but yeah. Hey guys, we're going to be making some 3D art for Thanksgiving out of some unexpected material today. All I did was I found some Google images of turkey skeletons because you know everything's got to be a little bit creepy and spooky here. And that's going to be the base of my design. I took a piece of watercolor paper, just any watercolor paper. This one is a Canson pad. It's cold press and it is 9 by 12, just big enough for our artwork at 140 pounds. What's great about this is you don't have to be really good at art to get make this work. Um, anybody can do this. So I'm basically just going to position my artwork on the back of the watercolor paper. All right. And then what I've got here, this is my light tracer. Now, if you don't have a light tracer, you can easily just tape this onto a big open window and the light will shine through and then you'll be able to trace out your image. But for me, I'm just going to use my light box because I've had this thing for years. It's very old, but it's very trustworthy. I'm actually going to turn it to the side so that the whole paper fits. And then I'm going to turn it on. It's really hard to see um, unless it's dark. So I'm going to be shutting down the light so that I can trace my skeleton design onto the sheet. All I'm going to be tracing is the skeletal design of the turkey onto the watercolor. Just so you guys get an idea of what this looks like, this is what I'm seeing on my light pad. All right, so that is what we've got. Just the skeletal outline of the turkey. It doesn't have to be really defined. You just want a basic outline. You want to leave some holes to put negative space in there. And then now we're going to be making the resist for our artwork or the basis of our resist for the artwork. And I'm going to do that using hot glue. While our hot glue is heating up, I'm going to use a reference photo to sketch in some parts of the turkey that I'm going to be watercoloring around the skeleton that we're putting in next. So this is my reference photo. And I'm just going to be loosely sketching. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. You know, maybe I want the little red waddle to go in there. So I'll sketch kind of where that's going to be. Um, Turkeys have a really profound, like, front ruff. So I'm going to make sure that that's in there. I also have this, like, hairy beard thing that comes down. I'm just going to make a couple lines for that. You know, I just want them to look like a really robust turkey. And I'm going to generally kind of put sketch lines where I think his tail should be. And like I said, nothing too specific. You just want a very light kind of outline here and here of where the turkey is going to be extending past the skeleton. All right, so hot glue's warm enough. And now I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna go over all the skeleton parts that we drew, leaving some holes and openings. So this is very time consuming. You wanna take your time, don't go too fast. Um, be careful, it is hot. So if you're doing this with kids or your little monsters, make sure you have monster supervision. Um, you're just gonna squeeze the glue real slow and just take your time. Now we're 
just going to let that cool and dry before I pull off any of the little webs on here. So that is basically what we've got. It's basically a turkey skeleton made out of hot glue. Still very warm. Then the next step, I'm going to wait till Kristoff gets home to do the watercolor together. So I've made a bunch of different versions and styles, so it'll be fun to see how these come out. All right, so I've got my hot glue turkey all on the paper or the skeleton of the turkey done in hot glue. But Thomas, I prefer hot gravy on my turkey. Well, we're going to be painting these, not eating them. Oh, we'll eat the turkey later. <laughs> this is for the decor for Thanksgiving. Oh, well, okay. I want to hang some turkey Thanksgiving inspired 3D art, and I thought this would be a great project to share. Absolutely. So you can see my pencil lines. It kind of gives the basic outline of the shape of the turkey around the skeleton that we glued earlier. And of course, here's my reference image of the tom so that I can get all the colors right. Oh, he looks more like a Tomas. Yeah, he's pretty dignified. He is. I even have a picture of a couple, you know, one for you and one for me. Mm. So since this is watercolor, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using a wash brush and some clearing water and I'm gonna be saturating my paper. Anywhere that I'm gonna be painting. Cause Why do you saturate the paper, Countess? What does that do? So when you use watercolor paper, it's actually a wet on wet medium. Okay. So you want your paper wet so that the paint works better. I'm not necessarily very good at watercolor. And I think- She's really good at it, don't worry. And that's because it's not a lot of control. Mm -hmm. You really don't have a lot of control over the color and the way it spreads. Okay. So I'm just gonna give that a minute to soak in, maybe 30 seconds, just so it's not quite so liquidy mm -hmm. before I start painting. Now the watercolors that I'm using today are a brand called Peerless Watercolor from Nicholson. They come in these little sheets of paper that you cut your colors from and then put them in the pan to add water to before it makes color. You can usually get those at specialty high-end art stores. Oh, fancy pants. Yeah, I tend to, they keep better than the tubes. The tubes tend to dry out, so those hmm. won't dry out because they're already dry. All right, now my water's soaked in and now I can start painting. I'm gonna start with the tail. Countess, I have an idea that might be helpful for everyone. Sure. Why don't I bring the camera over so people can watch you actually paint? We can do that too. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna outline the back edge of the turkey's tail with some Payne's Gray. <clears throat> Getting old turkey? Well, no, the edge of their tails are darker. Oh yeah. Well, you know, gray. I have a lot of gray. And then I'm gonna come in with a reddish brown just under that, leaving a little line of white. If I can. If not, no big deal. You know, it can blend together and blur. You wanna go about halfway down to leave room for the next row of feathers. Next row is white, and then we go back in with that Payne's gray again for the top of the next row of feathers. Nice and light. Looking really nice so far. And now I'm gonna go in with a sepia brown and kind of mix and wash it in with that gray so it kind of blends. This is the fun of watercolor, the blending of colors. They get this real watery, like ethereal mix to it. I don't know. Organic, actually. Yeah, very organic. <clears throat> it's a very organic art style. Which makes sense, considering we're, you're painting a living creature. 
it's supposed to be soft and it's not supposed to have harsh lines. Mm. And most of the turkey is the sepia brown and the paints gray. So now I want to make sure I get inside the little holes all around the hot glue to accentuate the bone structure that we painstakingly put in with that hot glue. So you just want to kind of blot those void areas to make those dark parts stand out. I'm just going to go right along the neck bones. So now I kind of want to add lid that the wings are down and spreading out this way. So I'm going to pull that color down here and then I'm going to go back on top with my paints gray and I'm going to make some little lines, it's darker color, just kind of to give the, essence, the impression of the wing tips. Mm. I don't think he's wearing shoes, Countess. Wing tips, get it? I get it. He would definitely be a dapper turkey. He would be a dapper turkey. Get a little top hat, some wing tips. He's already got the tails. Yeah. All right, so next, turkey's heads are actually blue. Fun fact, the reason that they're blue, at least to my knowledge, is that <clears throat> the bright blue actually warns off predators. Your fun fact for the day, mortals. detail in the turkey's skull as I wanted to with the hot glue, but that's okay. Next, I'm going to make his waddle a nice bright red. You can see how the watercolor is feathering out. That's okay. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's an impression of a turkey. You don't want it to be exact. And now I'm just going to fill in with the rest of the colors. A little more browns more lines of gray. Kind of want to model there. Maybe I'll even go in with this reddish brown color again. Mm. You know, whatever you want. This is your art. <clears throat> you don't have to copy me exactly. Do what you want. And you can even do this with other birds or animals. You know, this technique is pretty easy and can be done with so many different things. So at this point, you should let it dry before going in and adding any final details. Like I might go back in and add some more edge detail on the edge of the wing here just to make the wing pop up and go more forward. Maybe some more detail on the waddle. But I want this first coat to dry. Um, so I'm probably going to leave this overnight before painting the next steps. Okay. But there you have it. Super easy.